Mama K. Kemiaki Odea Debayo. I'm the CEO Executive Director for Bold Moves Africa. And this event is being organized by the Leading Women of Africa, which is run and was founded by Madam uh, Madeline Nkunu. And we're going to hear from her very shortly. But before we do that, I've been checking how everybody is doing. If you've just joined us, please let us know how you're doing in the chat room. This is supposed to be a relaxed one for us to celebrate, to connect, to reflect. That's the theme for today. So there's going to be dancing at the end. Please don't go away because we it's going to be fun. Trust me, it's going to be a good way to start the weekend. Just fun dancing, nothing serious because I know I get carried away when I'm dancing. I can see Ravia nodding already. So I hope you're ready to join in in some moves or whatever else we want to do. So the agenda is really a short one. So we're going to have prayer for 2022 by Dr. Nelly. And then if we could, because we try and as much as possible to accommodate each other in terms of our faith. And this is about believing in God. So if there's any one, you know, in, uh, we had a, a Muslim person who was supposed to lead us in prayer as well, but sadly couldn't make it. So I don't know if there's anyone that can do that for us, please feel free to let me know and we will, you know, hear you pray, you know, alongside for us. Then we're going to have the opening remark by Mandalina Nkunu. And then we're going to have a keynote address on keeping with our own goals by the former speaker of the South African National Assembly. My own very sister from another mother, Sis Gwen Malangu. And uh, she's going to talk to us, you know, a little bit about, yeah, how we can keep up with our own goals. Then we're going to have words of encouragement by the Dean of the IEDC School of Management in Slovenia, Professor Danica. And I'm, I'm not sure whether she has joined us yet. So she's just going to give us a brief word of encouragement, you know, to start the year 2022. We all know how 2021 was for most of us. And we're hoping that 2022 has already really started well. COVID or no COVID, you know, we're slowly getting back into it. Then we're going to have a presentation of certificates to a few people that we feel, not that everybody does not deserve a certificate, believe me, everybody here attending today deserve a certificate of appreciation. However, we just felt those people have got beyond the call of duty in terms of what they're doing. And we would like them to just share a word of encouragement to the others when they presented the certificate. And then to end, we will have a closing remark by Madam Nkunu again, and then it will be party time. So don't go away. It will be fun, fun, fun. So welcome everybody again. Thank you, Madam Johnson. Hello, everybody. And thank you for joining, you know, the meeting again. And we're well, so glad to have everybody on board. So if I could invite our dear sister, Dr. Nelly Kangwa, all the way from Zambia, if she could help us start with an opening prayer and prayer for 2022 itself. And, you know, if you're a person of no faith or faith, please just allow us and indulge us during this time. So Dr. Nelly, when you're ready, please unmute yourself. Yes. Thank Father, you. in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, Heavenly Father. We bless your name this time. We thank you, dear Lord, for your faithfulness and your goodness. We thank you, mighty Father, for this opportunity that you allowed us to gather today, Heavenly Father, from different countries with one voice. We honor your name, Heavenly Father, for the way you've carried us through last year up to this year. And there are many things that are happening. Some of the things are good. Some of them are heartbreaking. Father, we pray that, Lord Jehovah, you shall be with our friends in Ukraine. Father God of Master, you shall bless Bless Father God or Master the people, you shall protect them, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you shall comfort the families that have lost their beloved ones. Dear Lord, as we gather today, may your will, Father God, be established in the name that is above all names. Father, we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Dr. Nelly. We really appreciate that. Can I, you know, ask if there's anybody here who wants to lead us in prayer the Muslim way? We would definitely oblige. Um, I don't know if there's anyone. I don't want to call anyone in particular, just in case. 
but we did have someone that was supposed to lead, but sadly couldn't be available for tonight. Uh, I just want to so pray that uh, God, you make, uh, you send this, you send us to this beautiful world, and so we can live our life. Uh, I just pray to you that align yourself, align ourselves with that purpose, so we can lead our lives and live our life according to that plan that you already set for us. And I wish that the war, the, the Ukraine and the Russian war, I prayed today uh, in my prayer as well. I am praying again that it will be ended and people and the leaders should, may, uh, should know that war is not the solution. It is uh, actually uh, a peaceful mind uh, uh, and an intellect uh, mind and peaceful heart that knows that how to resolve the issues. So I, I am hopeful that God blesses um, uh, this world, um, um, a better um, a people with better understanding that they can prevail um, peace with their actions. This is my prayer and this is my prayer that uh, as um, I, I really appreciate uh, the leading woman of uh, Africa doing a great work for collaborating and for bringing all the ladies from all around the globe together. Uh, it will be strengthened and everyone realize that in today's world when the connectivity is easy, global connectivity is more easier so we can connect, collaborate together more. So thank you so much uh, for inviting me here, um, uh, Madeline, and thank you so much, Mama K, for giving me a chance. Thank you so much. Thank you. I mean, thank you so much. I me, I me, I me, I me. Thank you so much. Yes. So can I now invite Madam Mukunu, who is the LWA leading women of Africa president, founder, CEO, and everything else that she does with such an amazing organization. She's going to just say a few words, you know, in terms of uh, opening remarks or a long word. I don't know whether it's a few or long, whichever way. Your, your, please go ahead, Madam Mukuna. Thank you so much. It will definitely be uh, a few words. I would like to welcome, welcome really everyone that has honored our invitation to gather together, to connect, to, to really just be there for one another. As it was mentioned um, earlier on, uh, 2021, 2020, 2021, were one or a few of the most difficult years for many of us, many, and I would say really many. I think everybody felt the pinch of those two years. And I think many are still praying that those two years actually never existed. And we wish that we could actually erase them from our past if it was possible. So now as we end 2021, and this is our first, se oh, sorry, for, uh, 2022. And this is our first session of the future is female. We continue with this theme because we continue to believe that definitely the, go the global future is female. And uh, the more we continue to remind ourselves that we need to be a center of development, that is where we get our encouragement, we get our motivation to say that Aluta continue. So mm -hmm. as we start uh, uh, this new year, first we wanted to reflect in the past. So we wanted to reflect 2020, 2021, and all the support that we got and all the contribution that we got. I think in 2021, we focus on how do we see more women actually represented um, in the, the, the mainstream economy, whether in politics, whether in corporate, whether in entrepreneurship, we want to see more women emerge and the way kind of strategies that way uh, coming you know from different speakers 
on how we could really continue to forge, we could continue to arise, to emerge. Because as we know it, development is not something that will happen in isolation. It's not something that will happen with um, when the majority of people who are represented by women are left behind. It's all of us, men and women, to hold our hands and um, to, to, to basically ensure a better future for our homes, for our cities, for our countries, for our continent, and for our world. Now we're going to hear from my dear sister, like I said, from another mother, Sis Gwen. She's my big sister. So I, I, I cannot dare call her Gwen. That's just me. Is the culture I grew up in. So, <laughs> so she's my big sister, Sis Gwen, and she was a former uh, speaker of the South African National Assembly. And she, not only that, she was a minister as well for public works. Um, she runs her own foundation now. She does a lot of work for women and children in a community with her husband, family, and a lot of other people. So she's going to share, you know, address us um, on keeping with own goals. But what I would like you to do, Sis Gwen, is maybe at the beginning, if you just tell us a little bit about yourself before you go into, you know, your specific address that you want to give us. Thank you, ma'am. And please, may I remind everybody to mute yourself unless you've been asked to unmute. Thank you so much. God bless. Okay, Sis Gwen, thank you. Good evening, and thank you for, for those uh, kind remarks. Um, indeed, uh, we, we had a lovely time at the beginning of democracy in South Africa, where yourself and a number of women kept on giving us strength for the new positions that we had, because without um, the assistance from other sisters, we would never be able to make it. And that reminds me was I need to say some few things about myself. Okay. I remember when I was uh, chosen in 94 to represent the ANC in parliament, I re received um, a delegation of women from the university, that time it used to be called Medunza, and um, researchers and uh, speech writers, all different portfolios you could think of. And they said, you come from our area and we need you to shine because we are here. We can do a number of things for you. And I found that quite a women's no, no woman should fail because we are here. And that is actually what is missing in this topic that we're discussing today, that with so many women who have achieved, why are we still having problems? Because we should just be extending our hand and then his sister holds my hand. He, I mean, she has been there before. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. If I took a path which was not a good path, Mama K should not be getting in there because I've been there. I should be able to say, no, no, this one you don't use. But anyway, my small background, I never um, planned to be in politics. My strong part has always been in the church and advocacy for women all over wherever I was. And this 1976, when uh, a lot of things changed in South Africa, I was a university student. And I had to react like senior students in the country would do. I then decided I need to get into the structures of democracy, start working so that by the time the ANC is unbent, it finds us all working fine. That is a story that can take a day of its own because uh, um, I had a number of people, like especially my mother, who could not understand why I want to abandon this good path that I'm going and I'm going to be killed because that is what was happening in those days. Long story short, I became very active, especially in the Women's League. And most of you know that I became very close to Mama Winnie Mandela. And in long time, I served in her um, the cabinet of the Women's League, and uh, through that, uh, my work was recognized by the people who recognized work, and then I was called into 794, and uh, I usually say women at times, when we say, we mention our achievements, we're not bragging 
to other people who are saying it can be done. And whenever I say to people, you know, a position, there are only two positions that I did not occupy in government, and that was being deputy president and being president. But all others that were there, from being chief whip, I mean, from being whip of parliament, chairperson of a committee, deputy speaker, speaker, minister, deputy minister, I have been there. And it is not because of me. It was because of the women, and I still want to mention people like Frini Chinwala, women who were always there to say, I encourage you to take the next step. I encourage you to do this and that. I remember I traveled with Frini Chinwala to Switzerland. We were going to represent the South African parliament. And when I was there, it was hardships, and it also brought skills. We knew how to run families and, and, and even businesses from home. And that technology and skill cannot escape us. It is still there. We thank LWA for organizing this round table. Together, we can go further. Malibong, we can go further. Malibong. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a powerful yeah. keynote address from our dear sister, comrade, grandmother, wife. She wears so many hats and you hear that you heard her there. I was just even focusing on one or two things within, you know, the parliament that she had done. But she's been everywhere, you know, within the parliament. And like she said, you know, she didn't really plan to join politics. She was actually more active, you know, in the church and politics, I believe, found her and she made a great name, you know, for herself. And she's learned, you know, from the people before her, like she said, and she's still raising up the generation. And, you know, I know Madam uh, Madeline will sum up all this at the end, but for me, you know, there was a lot of things that stood out, you know, there for me. And especially, you know, when you said, you know, we women, we just need to show up. We need to show up, like most of you are showing up here. We need to stand up, you know, when we need to stand up, you know, to address, you know, issues that we can't, we shouldn't close our eyes to. In South Africa, to ask if anybody has any question or wants to say anything, uh, to Sis Gwen, I know Rabia said already, so I'll maybe call you first, but if you want to, please, if you just show with indicating, you know, with the hand thing, um, if you know how to, if not, just write in the chat room that you would like to say something, just, you know, based on what Sis Gwen has said, either to encourage her or to ask a question, you know, we will take about three or so because I need to watch the time. So Rabia, if I get you to unmute yourself and then just follow on your three points. And then after the question, we will go hear from the Dean of IEDC who will give us some words of encouragement as well. So can I quickly have Rabia? Thank you. If you unmute yourself. Yeah, sure. I'm here. Yeah. So firstly, I just want to... Uh, Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Thank Keep you going. so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Uh, Madam Madeline, uh, for starting this beautiful initiative and giving uh, a chance to all the ladies or from all the globe to connect and to share the words on the future is female. You know, as uh, Miss, uh, if I pronounce Gwen. correct, Miss Goy. Gwen, yes, that's fine. Oh, yeah. Goy. Yeah, the beautiful words that she said that like, if you know that you, you should stand up, you should break the myths, stereotypes and then stand up and want to be counted, you know, and uh, if you want to be counted because women are better negotiated. I really appreciate that you come up and you say some, some incredibles to us as you are the, you know, uh, a beacon of light for all of us. Uh, to present the, your voice and all the women voice of Africa in the in in the in the uh, uh, in the in the assembly in your uh, in your senate and uh, in the parliament. 
uh, I don't know what uh, all the, uh, the, the um, parliaments you say there, uh, but here in uh, the speakers of the National Assembly say in the parliament. So I really appreciate and I really um, um, happy that I listened to from you. So on this topic, I just have three points. And uh, uh, as uh, uh, Ms. K, uh, K, uh, Mama K introduced me that I, I am also uh, the founder and the CEO of the leading woman of the world Pakistan. And while sitting here in Pakistan, and uh, people uh, less know about my country and uh, the women here and how we are doing the work here. So this is a, a great chance that I connect to you and represent myself and my country among you, you uh, more experienced and um, uh, honorable uh, speakers. So <clears throat> my vision also, you know, to become number one among the most influential women. And uh, this vision is didn't come in my mind. If I, I, I think that if uh, you know that uh, rather you build your dream or you have a dream. you have to understand that you have, uh, as a woman you have a high self-esteem you mm -hmm. if you know your values and you know yourself then you can see something bigger than you and you can chase it and you can go for it and you can achieve that and first uh, you have to trust and believe in yourself when you trust yourself when you believe yourself all mm -hmm. the circumstances all the world just help you to do that Otherwise, I am just, I am telling you my story. I belong to Pakistan, sitting here in Multan. And the city of Saint, which is considered this, I am thankful to the technology, but I am thankful that I uh, listen to my voice, that there is something mm -hmm. big for me. I'm listening to all the women. I am thankful to all the women who listen their voices and stand up for themselves, stand up for their dreams. Mm -hmm. They know that they should be collect, they should be counted, their efforts should be counted. They are more than the society and the world told them. So I just want to share the three points with all of you. And I will end up uh, about, with the point that I love the most, the poem of Maya Angelou. So firstly, the, I want to uh, tell you the, the three points that I implement in my life and, what, uh, and that is high self-esteem. You have to understand that as a girl you have um, as a woman as a lady you have more power and you have um, you know you didn't realize it but you have to understand that uh, um, all the ladies who are more experienced and honorable to me they realize their powers they are doing uh, uh, their best in their communities but through this channel or through this Facebook Live, or where, uh, wherever you are, and uh, you are young and you're listening to me, I just want to say to you that you have your self-esteem. You should realize that that you know your you know yourself and you know your worth. That you mm. can bring a big change in the society, in the in the nation. And now, as Mama Goy said, that technology is on our hands. And if we make any excuse, and that is our excuse. I think the, the like, uh, resources we have, we all have the similar resources and we can mm -hmm. use it and we can raise our ways through that. And the last point, you have to speak up. You have, if you have confidence, if you know that what you are doing, just speak up. Okay, I, thank you so much, my dear sister Ravia. Wow, that was some detailed points, you know, you had there. And the poem there, Interestingly, we are, we were supposed to have a young girl who was supposed to recite a poem for us, you know, as part of the activities of the day. So you see how God works? Just got just God made sure we had somebody to recite the poem. So yes, the poem by uh, Maya Angelou, which, like you said, we all have a little bit of eye in all of us as women. Uh, the phenomenon woman, what a powerful one. And thank you for summarizing in that way you know, believing in yourself, sharing your story, standing up for a dream, the high self-esteem, know your worth. That is really important. And the fact that, yes, we need to speak up. I'm going to go on to the next speaker um, who is going to share a few words of encouragement with us. And if anybody still, you know, wants to say anything as well, please, you know, let me know. We will try as much as possible to accommodate as many people as we can. And um, remember, this is about you, although we've got the presentation at some point after this. So thank you, 
you know, for that, Rabia. That was really powerful. And it's good to hear, you know, a little bit about what you are doing, you know, in Pakistan. No one now. So, Madeline, we need to bring her back. We need to hear more, you know, of what is happening. And that's what technology has allowed us, you know, to be able to do. So for those just joining us on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever you're joining here on Zoom, thank you and you're welcome. Please feel free to use the chat room or to, you know, message us as well. Now, now we're going to go to Slovenia, another beautiful place I would love to visit one day. So we're going to be blessed with a powerful woman who is the Dean of the IEDC School of Management in Slovenia. She's Professor Dan Danica, and she's just going to give us a few words of encouragement, you know, here. So Professor Danica, please tell us just a little bit as well about yourself um, when you start, you know, before the word of encouragement that you're going to give to us. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you very much and best regards and greetings to everybody. I don't think that you need too much encouragement because you are fantastic, courageous, great ladies and also beautiful, you know. I'm so impressed by looking at you and, and listening to you. I, I, I think that in the life, you, you know, one has to have a lot of courage not only in your country, but also in mine. And I had a courage 35 years ago when I was a young faculty uh, at a university, I decided to make a first management school in all Eastern Central Europe. And you mm -hmm. know, this was in the time, you know, Slovenia was a part of Yugoslavia. And in that time, Yugoslavia was considered as quite an open country uh, in comparison with Russia and others. And, you know, and we were, and I was, uh, of course, uh, wanting to make a real management school, but the word management was not allowed. I, don't, I can't say really forbidden or not allowed, but it was not well regarded. So I gave a name, IEDC, International Executive Development Center. And that's why people are asking me, what is that IEDC? Because we are Blade School of Management after we moved and built the school. What I would like to tell you is that I would I would I had some I had a chance to meet Madeleine Mad Madeleine I say Madeleine uh, perhaps you pronounce I mean, yes you pronounce it differently I met her quite some years ago in Cape Town uh, where we have alumni club of our students you know school uh, school of management so we have clubs the club also there. And then I invited her to the school in our place and she made MBA in our school. And I hope that more of you will come. I shall be very happy to receive you. And so, you know, what I, uh, what I wanted to tell you is that there's this courage, you know, in a certain period you need courage, but in a certain period you need other qualities more, like, you know, e energy you always need, trust, you need network. And if one one day, Madeleine decide that it would be interesting for you to give a lecture on networking. I would be happy to give a lecture of one hour, 40 minutes to you, because I think that networking, and it's exactly what you are doing now, but to realize more, you know, what is really bringing, and especially for women, because men are all one big network, but women are missing that. And so uh, I, 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 you know, I came as a president of management school here, and, uh, and then I, uh, I said to myself, what do I miss the most? I miss team building, you know, team building skills. I missed uh, time management skills, you know, how to decide what is priority. We have big problems managers with that, you know, <laughs> in academia or in business. And of course, networking, especially for women. And I would like to say that one day, when you see that your network is too narrow for you, that it's not good enough, that it doesn't offer you enough information, enough uh, self-satisfaction, you know, self-confidence and self -confidence and trust and all that, just choose another one or create your own one. Mm -hmm. And the next on creating. And I think that Madeleine made a big thing by creating this wonderful network of women from all over the world. And as I said, you can count on me. And whenever 
uh, you would like me to give you a lecture or that I am, uh, you know, on skills, there I'm strong. And if you would like to have something else, you know, to another lecture, uh, but I'm sure you have this enough in Africa too and all over. But, you know, some special things like networking, etc., cetera, and, and time management, that is something what I would like to share with you in the future. So good luck, all the best, be strong, you know, don't give up, never up. And uh, and uh, and I look forward to meeting you somewhere sometime again. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you so much uh, for that brief, concise, but to the point. Um, it was still words of encouragement. We we need it. Believe me, we all need it. And I like the fact you know that you are even volunteering, reflecting, you know, as well and celebrating. I love celebrating. Those who know me know that. So anything, just call me, we come and celebrate. So yes, we want to celebrate some people that leading women of Africa feel have been partners, have supported their journey, their life story up till now. I've been there for them through thick and thin and everything else. Or are planning to even be, even if you're not doing as much. Because you might go, oh, maybe I didn't even do anything. But well, we're putting you on the spot to let you know that, well, the plan is if you were not doing anything before with LWA, you now need to do something more. So there were 20 people who were selected, um, you know, just to appreciate. And, you know, we're going to be giving the certificate of appreciation you know, here, which you can print in your own um, comfort and, you know, laminate, put on a frame, whatever you want to do with it, do with it. So we will send it to you. But we picked, you know, a few people, 20. Like I said earlier on, for those who missed it, we are all special. I believe I'm special. I'm not getting an award today. But I know that my the Madeline still knows I'm special. So, so even if you don't get an award or certificate today, be assured that you are the special person. That even, I mean, I know it's like, you know, oh, why? You know, why wasn't I picked? You know, and so on. No. And the other thing is your time is coming. So just maybe there's a cue for it. So your time is coming. And it's not just about the paper, you know. This is really deep appreciation that has gone behind this to say we are appreciative of all you people that have been nominated. Some people are not here today with us. We'll focus on the ones that are here. I believe we have about 12 you know, out of the 20 that are here. If I don't call your name, please let me know, you know so that we can recognize you. But what I'll do is I'll quickly um, go through, and you have a minute, um, just a minute, so that we can give everybody, um, um, what's the word? an opportunity. So if I call your name and we will give you the do the presentation of the certificate, we just need you to share, you know, I know we're saying words of encouragement, but we all do need encouragement. But anything you want to share, just share it for a minute, please. Don't be like me that can talk for the world. So just, you know, share. <laughs> Just share one minute, you know, if uh, of your time. Whatever you want to share, it's fine. We won't hold you up to anything you want to say. If you feel like saying a poem under one minute, then fine. If you feel like dancing or if you feel like whatever you want to do, please do go ahead. And in no particular order, we're going to call out and recognize these amazing people who are doing so much you know, or who have done a lot and still doing so much, you know, in their line of work and what they do, whether it be about empowering women, young people, children, you know, everything else. Politics, making sure politics, you know, is known and goes around business, just different areas of work. So I'll start with um, our dear sister from Pakistan, uh, Rabia Nasser Mahmood. Forgive me if I don't pronounce your name well. I'm still um, learning. So that Thank is your you certificate. So Please, a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> a round of applause for Madam Rabia for all that she's doing. So, Madam Rabia, do you want to say yeah. anything under a minute? Please um, mute yourself, Ngandu. I need you to mute yourself or 
um we will meet ah, you yeah 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 sure 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 thank you so much it was unexpected for me okay. but i really appreciate this madam mean um recognize my work and give it uh, an appreciation i really um uh, feel honored for giving it to me and thank you so much that leading woman of africa is doing a great work and uh, i am so i am feeling so honored thank you so much for recognizing my work thank you thank you thank you so we will call up next our dear sister who we just heard from as well says gwen malango she is the former speaker of the south african national assembly we celebrate you ma'am well done you know for all you're doing and uh, this certificate is to appreciate you and on the certificate it says the same for everybody for your contribution and support towards women empowerment strategies in 2021 and i'm sure even before 2021 and the one you're going to do in 2022 so please going do you want to say anything i am so touched thank you so much um i am in the middle of um, organizing international women's day for next week on the 8th of march and um, at times you you feel like this energy that is in this room should have been there you know let the women understand why the united nations said this year break the bias because some of the things that are related to our topic now is the bias that when people see you and you have all the capacity capability of doing something because you are female you are not given the opportunity thank you so much i am going to walk tall next time we have a zoom meeting you'll be seeing the certificate behind me here because that is where it belongs yeah. thank you thank you so much and god bless you're most welcome you're most welcome reminder please mute yourself um send zeni i need you to mute yourself please unless you're called we need you to mute please thank you so much um now the next person we're going to be giving an award to is professor danica Pearl, who is the president of the iedc in mm. slovenia professor danica do you want to say anything or mute yourself yeah thank you very very much i feel humble honored happy uh, this is absolutely great, and I, as I said already before, I am proud to knowing this great uh, company of women, and uh, and I hope to be a little part of your success in the in the near future. And thank you, and Madeleine, special regards, and thank you very much for this kind attention. I like that. Thank you, Dr. Nelly, and you. Um, I'm sure you're here because you've invited a few. Uh, people here. So can I get you to unmute yourself and just say something, anything you want to share with us? Well done for all you're doing. Dr. Nelly? Okay, let me move on. Maybe Dr. Nelly too has network issues. Um, so let me move on. We can always come back to them. Then we've got Dr. Onalena Selowani, I hope I pronounced it well or didn't pronounce it too bad, from Botswana. She's an academician. Are you here, <laughs> Dr. I'm, Anna? I'm Anna. here. <laughs> I'm so here. lovely to see you, ma'am. You're welcome, ma'am. Congratulations. We celebrate Thanks. you. Thank you for all you're doing in Botswana, all over Africa or the world, wherever you're doing all your work with empowering women. Well done, we celebrate you, ma'am. Do you have Thanks any you, any word for us? Uh, no, just uh, just that I'm, I'm truly humbled uh, because, you know, when when you work particularly with the, uh, with the upliftment of women, um, it's very much part of the, our DNA, professionally and socially, that you don't even stop to think that somebody could actually acknowledge that you are making a contribution. And so it, it comes um, as, as a humbling thing when, when other women actually uh, do this wonderful thing of saying, we thank you for, 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 for walking the walk with us. 
that's all I can say for now. Oh, thank you, ma'am. That was beautiful. Yeah. So now I'll now call my sister from Nigeria, although based in the UK, Mrs. Olayin Kapayomi. She's the chairman Foreign Investment Network Fin in the UK. Nice to see you again, ma'am. You're most welcome and congratulations. We celebrate you for all you're doing in uplifting women and all the work you're doing in the UK, in Nigeria, other parts of you know Africa. In um, I think you mentioned the last time, if I remember, in UAE, United Emirates, and so on. So well done. Kudos to you for all you're doing. So I know I saw you earlier. So Mrs. Fayomi, if you could unmute yourself and just say a few words for us. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, everyone. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank um, Leading Women in Africa, uh, which has been led by Madeline. I thank you very much for this opportunity. I thank you very much for the recognition. And more so, I thank all of the women here who have joined us today. All of the women here are here today because they support the fact that the future should be women. And what are we talking mm. about? The, the future should, we expect, should be led by women. Not just putting men aside, no. But the mere fact that the way that our creators have made women, we think differently, we are able to do things simultaneously, concurrently, right? As against our other men, gender, they are unable to do what we can do. It's just the way they have, we have been created. And now, what can women use all of these advantages to, to lead the future, to a sustainable development for the, for the world to be a better place, sorry. Mm. So this is key. And I'm happy because you all have made time to come here. It is because you believe in it. I thank you very much for this award. So let me go on to our next award. Um, I think is the only man. <laughs> And I always love men like that, you know, where you are, you are, you are, you are, you are the minority, but at the same time, you are the majority in a way. But thank you. Our man from South Africa is a transformational coach. He's the chair of the Eagles at Life. And his name is Mr. Will Zondo. I know I saw him earlier on, so I'm still hoping he's here. And it will be good to hear your voice. And uh, congratulations and well done. You know, for all you're doing, you're the ones that are helping us women. And I'm sure a lot, you know, a few other men like you, you know, out there, you know, who are doing a lot for women, you know, in terms of empowering us within South Africa, Africa, the world as a whole. So, Mr. Zondo, if you're there, if you could commute yourself, congratulations. We celebrate you, sir. I must say it is an honor to be in the presence of power in the presence of intellectual capability, in, in the presence of, uh, uh, of creativity, in the presence of uh, possibilities, in the presence of fear, step aside, we here to move the world. Since I met Madame Madeleine, things have really been great. And Madame Madeleine, well done, you're doing a great job. You're moving mountains, and sometimes you don't even realize it until later on. But today you've taken the time to say to those that you've connected with and say, thank you and we honor you. And so it is my honor to really accept with respect. You've taken the time to say, you will honor me, you honor my efforts. And so I've decided also to wear a doki to say, hey. <laughs> so thank you, we celebrate all this amazing eight people and all they're doing with celebrate them. And if we haven't got an award today, like I said, it's not that we're not recognizing you. We celebrate you all, even for being here and staying till this time. Thank you. Thank you. We honor you and we celebrate you. Now I will hand over for the closing remark by the LWA president, Madam Madeleine Nkunu. So please, um, then we will not have to dance. You all are not going anywhere. I'm going to block you. So don't worry, you don't need to get up. I will get up to do the get up bit. 
But the one we're going to do, we're going to, if you feel like getting up, get up, I will start with just, don't worry, I won't tell you about it. So over to you, Madeline. Great. Okay, no, I, I think just one minute, we're running out of time. Yep. But I think, let me just announce something. We've been talking with um, Comrade Green for a long time about um, living, living a legacy. Comrade Green have been part of uh, some leadership program we've been running before, uh, before COVID where we've been having members of parliament, politicians from our, uh, around Africa, and we've been discussing issues that Africa is facing. And she kept saying, like um, she said today, and I will just highlight a few of her sayings, where she said that the future has always been female where did we go wrong? It's always. So from the past, she's been telling us the stories of the 70s, the mm -hmm. 80s, the 90s, how women continue to basically spearhead some of the, the spheres. She's just confirming that the future has always been female. Where did we go wrong? And, and I think she says so many things, but one thing that I would like here to basically announce that we've been talking with her uh, uh, before about a mentorship program for women politicians. Mm -hmm. So today, it's actually that day. Comrade Queen, I think you're still here. We are launching that program where once a month, we're gonna call on women politicians from around Africa and the world to learn from you, to learn from your experiences so that we can pass that button of leadership mm -hmm. to the next generation. That is the project. It's, it's actually, it's, we've been talking about it with uh, Comrade Green. And uh, today is actually the day that we see that we now need to take action. And I think Vicky have just told us, have just taught <laughs> us that we cannot continue talking. We need to take actions. So mentorship for women politicians is starting now. And some politicians are here. Councillor Fozia, you here as much as you back in business, but you have so much to pass on to the next generation. So we will call on you, we will call all the politicians, the retired politicians to come and mentor the next generation of women politicians that will take Africa to the better place. Thank you so much. That is the last announcement. Over okay. to you, Mama Kay, as we celebrate okay, wow. the that, new that... project of Women in Politics Mentorship Program. Yeah, no, that it's so good to hear. I'm not need it, or that it will benefit. So it is important that we network. We network. We keep networking and follow up on them. Be intentional about following up on them. So I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm a bad. <laughs> I'm still learning, you know. Uh, but I'll get there eventually. So. Please let's you know network and celebrate each other. So now we're just going to, I know it's 6:30. We're officially closed. This is the after party. I wouldn't let it go more than 15 minutes because I've got a busy weekend as well. So, but what we're going to do, don't start going away on me. It's just going to be a few things that we're going to do. Just to let off the steam, you know. We've been talking, talking, you know, all day, and I love dancing. So I, I didn't prepare a lot, so we're just going to do a few dance steps. That's all we're going to do. We will we will need to have this. So I'm waiting for a DJ, uh, DJ from technical person to start the music. But like I said, you have to do one. <laughs> okay. No, I'm using my shoulder. Yeah. 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 Yeah.